Hunger and ultimately survival is a powerful incentive for human beings. It can lead us to the unthinkable, even to one of the greatest taboos in history, eating human flesh. But survival is not the only curse of cannibalism, nor is it a practice that has been completely eradicated in our times. Can cannibalism be motivated by social and religious factors? By the fear of demonic spirits or shamanistic beliefs related to the brains of our dead? Welcome to Intrigued Mind and join us today as we look into one of the world's most controversial communities, the Last Cannibals. It is not very difficult to imagine the origin of cannibalism's aversion in many world cultures. Eating a sister or brother of your own species seems to be the most deplorable form of betrayal. But we do find this practice in the animal kingdom, and they seem to be motivated by that which has always driven the behavior of species – survival. In the American Southwest, spadefoot toads lay their eggs in transient ponds that are in danger of drying up at any moment. For those toads to get out of the pool quickly is a matter of life and death. How to accomplish that? They are forced to eat their brethren in the ponds, developing large jaw muscles, wild-looking teeth and shortened digestive tracts. It is the only way to get out quicker than their herbivorous comrades. Planet of the Apes is a work of fiction, but it is inspired by the big apes of the real world. The British primatologist Jane Goodall recorded chimpanzees eating other chimps back in 1977. Since then, cannibalism among the great apes has been detected several times, with reasons ranging from nutrition to survival. Cannibalism was a common practice in the origins of many ethnic groups. It is highly likely that Homo antecessor practiced it 800,000 years ago. The Aztec Empire in North America is one of the most controversial cases of cannibalism. Several Spanish chronicles mention it, and there is a theory that claims that human flesh was the central part of their diet. On the other hand, it is quite likely that the conquerors intentionally exaggerated this to show the Aztecs as subhuman savages in order to legitimate genocide and slavery. One of the most accepted versions of this story is that the Aztecs ate human flesh in the context of their well-known human sacrifices, more like some form of communion than a cannibalistic feast. But even at this time in history, Europe had not passed completely out of this practice. A form of cannibalism was popular especially in the 17th century, the consumption of body parts or blood for medical purposes. It was recorded as late as the second half of the 19th century that still some peasants attending an execution rushed forward and scraped the ground with their hands that they might collect some of the bloody earth, which they subsequently crammed into their mouth in hope that they might thus get rid of their disease. These instances of cannibalism related to specific ethnic groups have to be taken with serious consideration because contemporary sources were trying to dehumanize the people accused of such acts. Nevertheless, such practices around the globe were likely to be occurring two or three hundred years ago, more than they are now. What can be agreed upon is that for most of humanity, cannibalism remains the ultimate taboo. But in the last two centuries, we have witnessed cannibalism cases that have continued around the world. Taboo is not enough to stop the most primitive instinct of the human being, survival. The Donner Party was one of the most notable cases. In 1847, they got stuck in the Sierra Nevada mountains en route to California. They decided to overwinter there with the hope of pushing through at a later date. 
That was not possible after a large blizzard hit and snowed the whole party in. Although there were rescue missions, they also ran into problems with the weather. The Donners split the party into two camps, about seven miles apart. And at the end of the disastrous winter, cannibalism occurred at both of them. The Uruguayan rugby team suffered their infamous accident in 1972 that pushed the survivors to their limits. This tragedy was memorized in the 1993 movie Alive that recorded the fact that in order to survive, individuals had to resort to cannibalism. Some of those who refused to were not able to. When it was revealed the survivors resorted to cannibalism, there was a great uproar, but at the end of the day, they were alive. However, these examples are only from extreme circumstances where people were put to a life and death question. Far from the great metropolises and the globalised world problems, there are still cultures with unimaginable lives, wherein cannibalism remains part of the culture. The Korowai tribe lives in the jungle of Papua, Indonesia, on the side of the Nadiram Kiba River. Until the 1970s, their universe was themselves. Their island was, for them, existence in its entirety. They usually wear little or no clothing, with necklaces decorated with the animal's teeth they hunt for food. Their encounter with civilization was a historical event for them. They discovered that they were not alone and that many things were occurring in the great sphere that others called Earth. Until then, they had developed customs related to their natural environment. A society of hunter-gatherers with horticultural elements who had to be especially careful to make the best use of their food. The appearance of visitors from the outside world provoked incidents and situations that triggered rumours around the Korowai people. The rumour was that no one returned alive from a visit to their territory. It certainly wasn't easy for the Korowai people to deal with the outside world. And the outside world was confronted with something that actually makes a lot of sense, but is seemingly unbelievable. Cannibalism. It is known that the Korowai people initially considered outside witches, or Kakua, a figure that already existed in their culture and always represented a great fear for them. And what did they do with people who, for them, were possessed by the spirit of the Kakua to kill the Kakua to free them and allow them to travel to the other world required a special ritual. The ritual consisted of shooting a magic arrow directly into the heart of the possessed body. The executioner was then the person in charge of the following ritual, the feast. The Korowai people lived together with scarce resources. Therefore, they never wasted anything edible. If someone hunts a pig, the whole pig is eaten from tail to rib meat and even the eyeball. So what happened to the Kakua bodies is to be expected. They were cooked and eaten by the tribe. Only the children, considered unprepared to feed on this meat which has been contaminated by demons, were taken out of this ritual. Journalist Paul Raphael infiltrated the Korowai community. His testimony is first-hand, but also criticized by the scientific community. They accuse him of obtaining information and formulating conclusions guided by the superficial criteria of television programs such as the one that accompanied him on his journey. There are more precise details about the Karawai forms and their transformations in recent years in their stories and accounts. It is said that the Karawai consider Kakua bodies that decay for unknown reasons, in other words, disease. These people are subsequently sacrificed and eaten. For some reason, this malignant practice is only associated with men. Women's lives are never sacrificed in this tradition. The settlements that were established near the Karawai produced a profound cultural change in them. 
Western legislation and the legal concept of murder has been instrumental in the decline of their ancient cannibalistic traditions. It is also widely commented that the Karawai people are now aware of foreign civilization and the use of money. They have, in ways, been forced into the tourism industry to succeed in the modern world. Part of their traditions are now a performance for visitors and tourists. Far from the Papua, on the banks of the river Ganges in Uttar Pradesh, India, there is a small group of people that, for centuries, find strength where others find filth and fear. Varanasi is the hometown of the Aghori, an ancient Vamakarik Hindu sect with a lifestyle that challenges our ideas about human nature. The Aghori are travelers, but they believe that from death you get the life energy. Human skulls hang from their heads to be filled with beverages or transformed in jewelry. Human femurs are used like whacking sticks, and human flesh is what keeps them strong. On the banks of the river, where the poor households have to dispose of their dead relatives if they cannot afford funeral rites, the Agori find their precious food and items. They only eat freshly dead bodies and take what is abandoned in the water or at public crematoriums. As a result, the Ganges River is cleaner than it would be without the Aghori. The Aghori are believed to have supernatural powers according to rumors among the locals. There are claims of Aghori medicine healing AIDS and other terrible diseases. In the end, the way the Aghori looks dark but has the bright mark of life and survival. The Azmat people are another of the last cannibals. They are natives of the island of New Guinea, and it is believed that traditionally they hunted their enemies using their skulls as cooking containers. The journalist Karl Hoffman made a story about it in his chronicles. They shook their brains on a palm leaf, scraped the inside of the skull with a knife to get every last bite, then mixed with dough and sago, wrapped the leaf and roasted it on the fire. The food was special. There is an unproven myth related to Asmat people. It says that they were responsible for the death of Michael Rockefeller in 1961, a member of the Rockefeller dynasty and fifth son of future Vice President Nelson Rockefeller. The Centralese are a tribe living on an island off India's east coast and one of the last genuinely uncontacted people in the world. They speak a unique language and their contact with outside cultures is minimal. It is said they are a people who live in Stone Age ways and that their isolation has extended for approximately 60,000 years. The American missionary John Allen Chow caused an unfortunate incident that ended with his own death. He was attacked with bows and arrows after landing on the island to convert its inhabitants to Christianity. Although we know little, we believe cannibalism is still currently practiced here. Cannibalism terrifies us, like few other things. Curiously, this terror seems to be motivated by the same fire that has led some to practice it, survival. Others' practice is for survival in a more spiritual sense. Like all human experience, is not prejudice, but empathy that helps us to understand cannibalism as a complex phenomenon. Every story and experience is a different universe. For more amazing videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.